Reformed Church. I was thinking about in, in, in Deuteronomy, it's Deuteronomy chapter 30 is where it, uh, the Lord lays out and he says you know, about choosing life or death, blessing and cursing. And I'm not going to get into the, actually the, the, the specifics on, on what that means because you can't, like the, the, the choice he was giving Israel back then was really between like two covenants, really. So the whole choosing between life and death thing isn't quite like in context the way that people normally teach that. But at the very least, um, when he asks them to choose life in Deuteronomy 30, and um, he lays out in Deuteronomy 28 all the blessings that, um, that would come upon them if they, if they kept his commandments. Um, one quick point on that is the fact that the commandments he's talking about, when you're reading the book of Deuteronomy, whenever he's talking about the commandments or the command that I give you this day, uh, you know he's not talking about the Ten Commandments, because the Ten Commandments weren't given that day. All right, um, the, the, the unique commandment that he had given them that particular day was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. But um, that doesn't just mean love God. Okay, that's not what that commandment means, right? We know that that commandment means faith. And that's important to say, right? Because I think, you know, we do live in a bubble. So you kind of, you say love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And it's like most people, again, to say this again, the vast majority of people uh, sort of translate that as just loving God, right? Like, j just love God. But that's, that's not the extent of it. He, he explains there how to love God, right? And he's saying, with your heart, which is referring to faith, and we got an obedience is faith, you know, article online for that to explain that. So just, you can take my word for it right now. It, that is the truth, um, that the commandment that he was giving them that day is referring to faith. Paul even quotes Deuteronomy and says, this is the word of faith that we preach. So this is beyond any doubt. That is what he's talking about. So, so again, just sort of taking my word for that right now. He says that you can choose life. He says that you can choose to prosper. And because he does in Deuteronomy 28, he lays out all of these um, blessings. He lays out, you know, he describes the prosperity that they would be in. He talks about their physical wealth. He talks about their you know, physical well-being, he talks about, you know, their family, he talks about um, their livestock, everything. He just goes over everything, right? And he's talking about how blessed they would be if they chose life. And the way that he describes choosing life or choosing this prosperity that he, he laid out was if you kept that commandment. And so I just want to sort of bring that to you that just to remind you that, you know, there's never an excuse to be down in the dumps about anything. Like, and I'm not just saying right now, and you're like, oh, you know, everything's good right now. But you're just talking circumstantially when you say that, and I'm just saying that there's never a reason to, no matter what you encounter, to ever feel you know, negative about anything. Because, and this is why. Because when, when we feel negative about stuff, it's because maybe something negative has happened in our life and we sort of feel out of control. It's like, it, it, that happened and I can't help it, right? And, and that's not true. That is not true that you can't help it. Anything, if any, I mean, for that matter, even if something isn't, you know, in particular, negative happening in your life right now, um, at any point in your life, you get to choose what you partake of, um, of the Lord, and what you don't, okay? Now, there's more to say about that, but that ball is in your court, and that should give you a sense of control, okay? Because you do have control over that choice, otherwise God wouldn't have told you to choose, okay? So it would completely invalidate God telling us to choose if we couldn't choose, right? If it was like, well, you don't have free will, or God is in control of everything, right? Which we've debunked that numerous times if you read our Sovereignty of God stuff and our, our, listen to our teaching online about that. But um, he told you to choose, and he said that you could choose those blessings. So why would we ever be down in the dumps if something negative happened? And you say, well, I can choose to prosper here. I can choose. You, listen, you get to choose to be wealthy or not, physically wealthy or not. And again, you know, I, I know people have an issue with that about when you bring up physical wealth, and you know, to be quite honest, I'm just not going to be ashamed of the gospel, because it, it, that's a part of what Jesus died to give us, is the power to wealth, right? So this is not a prosperity gospel thing, but you get to choose that. that that's a thing, right? Read Deuteronomy chapter 8, you could read Proverbs chapter 10, um, the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich, right? That God is the one who gives us the power to get wealth. I mean, there's more verses than that, but, um, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter, I think it's 9, um, where he says that, you know, God, God's able to make all grace abound to us so that we would have all sufficiency in all things, meaning all of our needs would be met, and you would have an excess. That means riches for every good work. So this is beyond dispute there, but you get to choose that, right? If you're financially strapped in some kind of way, you say, no, I get to choose. 
I get to choose. And again, that's Deuteronomy for you, right? That's Deuteronomy chapter 30. I get to choose if I'm wealthy or not. That ball's in my court. It's not in God's court. It's in my court. I get to choose that. And guess what? I'm not saying it all happens at one time, but you still get to choose. And if you want that, you can have that. Why is that? Because God told you, listen, you get to choose whether you keep my quote-unquote command or not, and that's referring to faith. You get to choose whether you believe me or not. You get to choose whether you learn me or not. And a choice to learn Jesus is a choice for prosperity. A choice to learn Jesus is a choice for the power to wealth to manifest through you. A choice to know Jesus is a choice to have your family even sanctified from this world based off of your faith in Jesus. So a choice for Jesus is a choice for prospering in all things. I mean, Psalms chapter 1 says, and whatever he does, referring to the man that meditates on the Lord, it says, whatever, whatsoever he does shall prosper. Okay, what, listen, listen to that, right? Whatsoever he does shall prosper. And that's applicable when you choose to meditate on his word day and night. Now, here's where I don't want to, because people will take what I'm saying right now and they'll run in the wrong direction with it. I'm not saying that you choose directly. So if somebody gets sick, oh, well, you know what? You're not choosing to be healed. That, no, no, it's not a direct choice over healing or sickness. It's not a direct choice over prosperity or, or you know, poverty or whatever. It, it's not a direct choice. Your choice is regarding what you hear, what you believe. That's what you get to choose, right? Now, that belief in the truth then produces the prosperity and all of that. So you are not directly responsible to be producing this fruit in your life. So don't take this, well, you choose, so why didn't you choose to be healed? Because, you know, it just, because then I would turn to you and say, well, why did you choose to be mortal? Because you were wearing a mortal body, so why did you choose that? Because despite our criticism of other people when, oh, you're financially strapped right now or you're going through a difficult time or someone is sick and we want to look at them and, I don't know, maybe, maybe in, in, in certain circles we want to look at that and say, well, why didn't you choose to, or you should choose to be healed or you should just kind of push on through it and, you know, walk in faith or whatever we want to say about that. You're walking probably uh, in a mortal body and I would ask you, why are you wearing a mortal body? Did you choose that? Um, because you don't have to. You have immortality and eternal life on the inside of you. And the truth is, right, that it's not about looking down on your, looking down your nose at somebody and say, well, why didn't you choose that? Because it, Choosing life and choosing prosperity is not a direct choice. It's a choice to listen to Jesus. So why don't we just, you know, if someone's listening to Jesus and someone isn't prospering in a certain area, they're still, they still have chosen prosperity. You understand? Like, that's, it's not like they, the only person that hasn't chosen prosperity is the person that chooses not to listen to the Lord or choose to reject some aspect of the gospel. Then in that area, you have chosen not to prosper, right, because you have rejected the gospel. So it's really, again, it's not that you're choosing prosperity directly, but you are indirectly choosing whether to prosper and how much to prosper or not, because you can choose. Again, that is in your court. That, that's something that is within your control, and God has put, given that to you and said, listen, the gospel produces life, produces peace. Carnal mindedness produces death. So in this particular circumstance or whatever it is that you need, and for that matter, let's not limit ourselves here, right? Whatever you want because the Bible says that, at, that the Lord's right hand is fullness of joy, or excuse me, in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand, pleasures forevermore, right? That means Jesus has not just everything he needs, but everything he wants to, pleasures forevermore, right? And so I'm talking about, well, I, I, could, I could get on that right now, but everything that you need or everything that you want, Jesus has already provided at the cross. I'm not talking about physical stuff. I'm talking about spiritual stuff that manifests physically, and Jesus provided that, and therefore you get to choose that. And so let me, let me leave you with one more choice, uh, with one more choice, with one more uh, point here. Um, the reason why I'm saying that you get to choose is because God's already provided it. He's already provided. He's already given it to you. So we get to choose whether to walk in these things or not by choosing whether to hear him or not. But God's already given these things. So you understand it's not like uh, I'm saying, well, you get to choose and God just isn't a part of this equation at all. The thing is, God's equation has been done already. That's why he sent his son and then he said it was finished. His equation's done already. You know, it is finished means it is finished, right? There's no way to spin that. It is finished. And people might say, well, yeah, Pastor Mike, but he wasn't talking about everything. He was just talking about sin. That is everything, right? Every problem in this world stems from sin. Sin and death are the only two problems in this world, and what do you know? Jesus came to die for sin. That means he finished every problem in this world. There's no way to get around that either, right? The only two problems in this world are, are those two things, and Jesus came to fix those two things. That means when he said it's finished, it, he meant, I just fixed all your problems, you don't have to like that, and you get the choice as to whether, as we've been saying, to receive that or not, but that is a truth, 
And I don't see how you biblically even get around that because there, weren't un, there wasn't a third problem that came into the world through Adam, you know, from that perfect garden that God had made. Two problems. And what do you know? Jesus came. And what do you see on the cross? Those two problems being taken by Jesus, that means he fixed all our problems. He finished everything. He provided everything. So with all that said, this is why you get to choose now. Not because it's just up to you and God has nothing to do with it, but because God's equation is already done. He finished everything. It's, it's completely done. There's nothing he left out. Fixed every problem that Adam started. Every problem that Adam started. Every problem from a hangnail to, to physical death to anything. Fixed every single problem, uh, financial or otherwise. And this is why God says, you know what? You get to choose this now. You choose to set your eyes on me. You have an issue, you know what you do? You say, you know what, I choose, Lord, to set my eyes on you. I choose to continue steadfast in my faith. I choose to continue to get to know you, Lord, and not be distracted by this thing. And if you do that and you choose to quote unquote keep his commandments, which is just talking about faith there, you are going to be like the parable of the seed and the sower, where the kind of ground that chose not to be distracted by their circumstances, whether those circumstances might be perceived positive or negative. They chose not to be distracted by those things, and they chose to set their eyes on Jesus and to be firm about that. No jokes, no playing around. I'm setting my eyes on Jesus. I'm not going to be distracted with this junk over here. You can choose that. You can choose that. This is what makes the distinction between those that receive from God and those that do not. It has nothing to do, you can't blame it on anything else. You get that choice. That's not a guilt trip. That should actually give you security to know that bad things don't just happen and they're just out of our hands and we can't prosper. No, you can prosper. And is it going to take some time? It depends on your learning. Does it have to take time? No. But if it does take time, it doesn't mean you're necessarily doing something wrong. Like the parable of the seed in the sower, there is a growth process, but they still chose to produce that fruit by choosing the seed of the word of God and by choosing to meditate on that and to maintain the word of God and not let it go for anything. Or as you we could say, maybe it sounds better to say, not let it go for nothing. That's, that's what you need to do. You need to get firm on meditating and keeping your eyes on Jesus, and you have therefore chosen to prosper. So don't get in this pity party thing, and don't get in this being down in the dumps over every little thing that has to happen to you, because guess what? No matter whether you perceive it small or big or whatever, regardless of what happens in this life, I don't care whether it's beginning times or end times or middle times. I don't care. It doesn't matter what calamity is going on on this earth or where the economy is at or where the gas prices are. You, by yourself, don't look at anyone else around you. Don't look at anyone else around you. You, by yourself, have the sole responsibility to choose whether to prosper or not by choosing who you hear, choosing who you meditate on. That's solely your choice. And every person gets to make that choice individually. My choice is not dependent on yours, and yours is not dependent on mine. Each person, if no one else in this entire world chose to prosper through calamities that have happened in this world or ones that will happen, for sure, in this world, if no one else chose to prosper, I personally get that choice to choose to prosper, to choose life, to choose to live, to choose to be wealthy, to choose to have my family sanctified. I get that choice, and you do too. All of us get that choice. That should give you a sense of security to know, Jesus, you finished every single thing already. I'm not looking to you to finish something. I'm looking to you to teach me about what you already finished. And I choose to be taught by you, Lord. And that will result in your inevitable prosperity in every area of your life. The Bible actually says when you choose that, he says, and I think it's Deuteronomy 30, but I could be wrong on that. He says that you should choose to serve the Lord with joy and gladness of heart. That's talking about faith. For the abundance of of all things, for the abundance of all things, right? And he didn't stutter when he said that. So you want that, then go after it. Go after it like it's the only thing that matters in this life because it's the only thing that matters in this life. That's it, or in the life to come for that matter. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reform Church, you can do so at reforminus.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.